Day after the Trump assassination part two, and we have more details. Let's talk about it right now. What's up, Wolverines? Welcome back to the channel. My name is John Crump. I'm an investigative journalist, and I keep an eye on the gun space, particularly stuff that has to do with Second Amendment rights, such as court cases and laws. Today, we're going to be talking about an assassination attempt, but I digress. If you can do me a big favor, like, comment, and subscribe, it would really, really help me out. We still have our fundraiser going for Pac-997 of the Cub Scouts, and today we are brought to you by our friends over at Otis Gun Cleaning Supplies. Today we are brought to you by Otis Gun Cleaning. Otis Gun Cleaning is your one-stop place for your gun cleaning solutions. They make awesome stuff like this boar snake. You can pull this right through and clean your gun. They make oils, solvents, and everything else. And if you follow the link down below in the description, you can actually help out the channel. Otis Gun Cleaning is a great solution to your gun cleaning needs, and I highly recommend them. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what we know about the assassination attempt and the assassin. As always, we will not be using his name or showing his face, but we have learned some stuff, and we did break some stuff yesterday on the show that turned out to be true. We did a live stream where we talked about some of his criminal past, and that stuff has all been verified now. Okay, so the would-be assassin used to live in North Carolina, but he moved to Hawaii recently. In 2019, it was reported to the ATF that he was a felon in possession of a firearm, which is illegal according to the federal government, even though I don't believe that it should be. So the FBI was notified of that, and they chose to do nothing. So this is another one of those cases where the FBI was aware of the situation. The felonies in question could be from his larceny charges, his receiving of stolen goods, or his weapons of mass destruction charge from 2002, where he was in possession of a machine gun. That really doesn't matter because the FBI never followed up on anything. So this is another example of where gun control does not work. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the gun that he used. It was not an AK as the media reported. It was an SKS with a bunch of plastic stuff on it, most likely a Norinco. The SKS had the serial numbers obliterated off of it, so that was removed. And one of the charges that he's going to be facing is removing the serial number from a firearm. He also had ceramic tiles in the bags. Originally, I thought they said ceramic tiles and they actually meant ceramic plates. But no, these were off-the-shelf ceramic tiles. So they're not ballistic ceramic plates. They were ceramic tiles. I'm not sure if he didn't know what they did or he heard that people had ceramic plates in their plate carriers and thought that they were the same with ceramic tiles, but they're not. This guy has no military experience, even though he went to Ukraine because he wanted to fight for the Ukrainian army. So he probably not too up to speed on actual military technology or any type of defensive technology whatsoever. Because if he did, he would have ceramic plates in the bags instead of tiles. The police were able to arrest him after a civilian took pictures of him and took pictures of the license plate. They were able to track him down by using license plate readers. If you don't know, license plate readers are everywhere. Almost every cop car now has a license plate reader that runs license plates automatically. So... That's how they caught him, and they were able to take him into custody. He was not talking and was just stone-faced. Today, during his arraignment hearing, he was seen laughing because he's a nut job. Basically, if you look at his Twitter, he was a nut job. His Twitter has now been scrubbed, and so has his Facebook. There's a lot of media organizations reporting that no one really knows what his political affiliation is. 
until you pull up the Act Blue records where he donated a bunch to Act Blue. He voted in the Democratic primaries. He has a Biden Harris bumper sticker on his truck. And also, he tweeted at Kamala and some other Democrats stating that Donald Trump must be stopped because he's a threat to democracy. So it's basically all the vitriol and rhetoric that the left has been spewing about Trump. And that rhetoric seems to have went ahead and radicalized this guy to far left causes. One of the funny things I see is a bunch of people trying to say that he's a Republican. I'm not sure where they're getting that from because if you look at his donations, he hasn't donated to a Republican and he donated to people like Elizabeth Warren, who is definitely not a conservative person and is one of the most liberal people in Congress. Now let's shift over to the investigations. The Secret Service is doing their own investigation and so is several other federal government entities. They are going to see where they failed because once again, they failed, but not as bad as they did in Butler, Pennsylvania. This time, a brave Secret Service agent did see the firearm sticking through the chain link fence and fired four to five shots at him. Even though he missed, it was enough to drive off the would-be assassin. So that is a success of that Secret Service agent. But there's a lot of questions like, how did this guy find out that Trump was going to be there? It wasn't that it was posted anywhere that he was going to be golfing at this particular golf course. He was just there and this guy was there. There are some reports saying that he was there for 12 hours waiting in the bushes, but that still doesn't explain how he knew he was going to be there. And also, no one knew this guy flew from Hawaii to Florida, and no one knows how he got the gun. And the car in question is also a big mystery. He's originally from North Carolina, but he lived in Hawaii. His son said that his dad is probably feeling like a martyr, which is absolutely ridiculous. He also said that his dad hates Trump, and so does he, because any reasonable person would do that you know, a reasonable person that tries to kill a former president, I guess. But I digress on that point. It's just ridiculous. In addition to the federal investigations, Florida will be doing their own investigation. Ron DeSantis, who is the governor of Florida, announced that today. There is a lot of questions. For example, the Palm Beach Sheriff's Department controls the outside perimeter of the golf course when the president is golfing there. This car was parked on the side of the road and there is woods right next to that road that leads to the golf course. And that is where this dude set up his sniper hide. So the question is, why wasn't that area patrolled? You would think that if a Palm Beach Sheriff's Department member saw a parked car along the side of the road where a former president is golfing, you would think that would raise suspicions, but apparently it did not. Now, I'm not saying that it should have raised suspicions because I'm not familiar with that road and I'm not familiar with how out of place a car parked along that road would have looked. But you would have thought that they would have at least checked it out to check out what was going on, but that was not the case here. Hopefully, Florida and DeSantis will get to the bottom of that. One of the most interesting things is the FBI says that the anti-Trump rhetoric played into this and that that is one of the causes of violence where people keep on trying to kill President Trump, but the media is not going to lay off Trump. And in fact, they have actually tried to blame it on him. Also, NBC last night said that it was an AR-style rifle, which we all know is bunk, but NBC probably doesn't know anything about guns, so they're probably not even sure what an AR-15 really is. So I'm going to chalk that up to stupidity more than a willful misleading of the public. Never blame on malice what can be attributed to ignorance and i'm going to attribute the nbc comments to 
ignorant. There's also a selfie with the shooter with a high profile Democratic donor, a major donor, but that could just be a selfie, even though it was taken in Ukraine, which is kind of bizarre. But yeah, so there is a selfie with him and this giant Democratic donor. And this guy has also been on a lot of TV shows talking about Ukraine. Not really sure what his deal is with that. But, you know, he is definitely a left-leaning individual, and he bought into the rhetoric that Trump is a danger to democracy and tried to take him out, which shows you the danger that the Dems are playing when they push all this nonsense that Trump is going to become a dictator and all this other bull BS stuff that they are trying to spread here. All right, guys, just want to give you an update of everything that we know, and I will keep you informed. Tomorrow, we should be returning to our usual schedule of information, including an update on the CRS case that I will be putting out tomorrow morning. So you can go ahead and check that out. And with that, we are out of here. So stay ever vigilant, stay ever free, keeping the fight. We're out of here. Wolverines and muffers.